all the commercials on television of this medicine, this medicine, this medicine. But you know, they tell you if this don't work, you're gonna have to get something to counteract it, you know? And, and you know, I just saying all this, I just want to say that I can introduce you to a man tonight, and his name's Jesus. He ain't got no side effects. Whatever you need from him, he's there to me. No depression, take care of your fear. All the problems you have, all you need to do is just call upon him. And he's there to receive you and answer whatever you need. Let everything happen, man. praise the Lord. Well, give me faith, give me faith. Give me faith like the men of old, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Lord, give me faith, give me faith. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego stood in the fire, but they weren't alone. Lord, give me faith. Lord, give me faith. Lord, give me faith. Lord, give me 
church in this morning. Are you blessed tonight? Come on, just magnify your God tonight.
so good. Let's say that again. God has been good, so good. I have been good. Let's do it one more time. God has been good, so Can we do that one more time? God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. I say God has been good, so good. I have been. I don't care. He's been good. God has been so. Through my sicknesses, through my turmoil, through my disappointments, through everything. He's one that's kept me and kept me sane in my mind. How many glad he's a good God tonight? Hallelujah. Let's sing that last chorus there again. God has been good, so good. <laughs> We're just going to tell him again. Being good, so if you're saved tonight, God has been good. In the English language, that word good has been really, amen, mixed up, scrambled up, amen, put a lot of ways. But God has been good, so good. Such a minute he's been good to us, hasn't he? God has been so good. I have been blessed. Can we sing it just one more time? God has been so good. I have been blessed. This is just my thinking for a moment. Maybe the angels that cry holy 24-7. For eternity. I'll be the Lord said, just listen a moment. God is so good from a fallen creature that was a sinner alienated from God, but now has been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And he's the child of the King. Because God has been good, so good. Thank you, Lord. Just thank you, Lord. Thank you for it all, for hands to raise eyes to see. Thank you for that ability tonight, Lord, to be back in your house. I just didn't preach a sermon this morning. I live while I'm preaching. I've been blessed. How many of y'all been blessed? We said amen to it, but amen, let's be a doers of it right now. Hallelujah. Precious are his thoughts of you and me. Come on, just praise him because there's no way I can recount all the goodness that God's been. He's been good. Would you lift your voices to him one more time? I have been blessed. Let's sing that whole chorus. And I have been blessed. God is so good. God is so good to me. Precious are His songs of you and me. No way I could count Him. It's not enough time. So I'll just thank Him for being so kind. God has been Because God has been so, so good to me. I have been blessed. I just don't. How much do I rob him of his goodness? God has been so good. So good to let me be in the house with you, saints of God. Precious are you tonight. Hallelujah. Would you just thank him one more time? That he's answering your prayers. He's changing things for you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. It's been good. Have been played. Fathers and mothers, they nurtured and raised. <laughs> 
so good to us. Hallelujah. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. A hand clap of thankfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we reflect back on, on the memories made, we can, we can look back and see that God was there, God was good, and God was in control. And the good news is tonight is he never changes, but he's the same yesterday today and forever. So you know what? God has been good to me, but God is going to be good to me uh, for the rest of my life, for the rest of my days. Just knowing him is being blessed. Just hearing the gospel is being blessed. Yes, is. And But you know what? He's precious are his thoughts. He's got plans for each of us here. And those plans are for good and not of evil. I mean, knows that one more time. He's worthy. Let's give him another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. We're so blessed. So blessed. Hallelujah. What a sweet spirit of the Lord that's in the house tonight. Hallelujah. So good to see everybody. You can be seated just for a moment. Let's keep our minds upon the Lord tonight. We'll have a good time in Jesus. But if the offering takers will come to the front tonight, we'll take up tonight's offering. Sister Carla, would you come and sing tonight? Give her a hand clap tonight. Praise God. I just want to praise Him for all He's done for us. He's done so much for us. Thank you. Okay, now i got to say that all over again. <laughs> Did most of you hear what I said, though? I'm pretty loud. <clears throat> so, you know, that's what this song is going to reflect. I, I just, I think we need to be the same in here as we are out there. We have got to show people that God is good. we got to show him that we're not hypocrites. <laughs> we don't come in here and act one way and go out there and act another. We just don't. We just don't do that. Is there anyone that falls? Is there anyone that fails? Am I the only one in church today feeling so small? So when I take a look around, well, everybody seems so strong. And I know they'll soon discover that I don't belong. So I took
Brother Sean, stand and testify tonight, brother. Amen. Let's make welcome to Solid Rock Trio tonight. Give them a hand. Well, praise the Lord. Lord. Y'all want to hear us as much as we want to sing? Yeah. Let's give the Lord another shout of praise tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. my burden down.
another round of praise tonight at Solid Rock. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Let's stand to our feet. Let's worship Jesus tonight. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. He's so worthy. At this time, let's give our pastor a hand. Well, let's give Jesus another glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! 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 
work now tonight. Come on and give him praise on that tonight. Now this feels a little bit like Pentecostal church. Somebody ought to praise the Lord just a little bit in here. Oh, this hallelujah. Just I laid my burden down. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to tell you that honky don't don't have nothing on the church. That nightclub don't have nothing on the church. We're the one that's alive. We're the one that's serving a real God tonight. Alcohol won't do it. Drugs won't do it tonight. But God can satisfy eternity that's in your soul tonight. One more time. Well, glory, 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 oh, can we sing glory. It? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since I lay since I lay my burden down. My burden down. Well, glory, glory, yes, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Since I lay, Ever since I lay. He's a mighty good God. Well, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor I didn't come to be a spectator. I come to be a participator. Hallelujah. Give God one more shout of praise. Somebody said, I don't have to have all that stuff. Well, I do. Because I'm an addict. I'm addicted. I just got to have it. (laughs) Hallelujah. God's good. Amen. I'm a Holy Ghost addicted. Hallelujah. I'm a Holy Ghost addict. I crave this. Hallelujah. God's good. Just turn around and look at your neighbor and say, well, glory, glory. Hallelujah, since I lay all my burden down, well, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay all my burden down. Give the Lord one more shout of praise tonight. Anybody feel better? Anybody feel better? Hallelujah. I don't mean you'll never have more trouble, but man, it's always good to lay them down for a while. Hallelujah. Well, he's a mighty good God tonight. Well, I'm feeling so much better. Better and better since I laid my burden down. Hallelujah. Ezekiel tonight, chapter number 47 tonight. Would you give God one more shout of praise? Hallelujah. Real glory, glory. I say glory, glory. Can you look at me while I go and one more time? Since I lay my burden down. Say it, church. Hallelujah.
ever since I laid on my furthest down. We'll give the Lord one more praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 47 tonight. Well, it's good to have David and his daughter. Is that your daughter? Amen. It's good to have them all the way from Indiana tonight. Amanda, it's good to have y'all tonight, all the way from Indiana tonight. God bless you for coming and being with us this morning tonight. Well, if you like shouting. Now, I have a, I've, got, I've got the piano tonight, and i got the organ, guitar, and bass, and drum. But you know what? I feel like shouting when I ain't got nothing left. Oh, my bird and dad. Somebody said you're crazy, but I'm happy crazy. That all matters. Somebody shout hallelujah. He's a mighty good God. I'm going to say again, it's good to have Sister Tani with us again back tonight. She'll be here too. She's, tonight will be, be your last night. Amen. She's been with us for, from Michigan. It's been good to have her to be with us also tonight. Amen. My beautiful wife, you got anything you want to say before I preach? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what. I go home right now and say it was good to be in the house of the Lord. It's been good. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. So good. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Oh, God, you was 23 years old when you got saved. Heaven's sakes. She got saved where Brother Randy lives on a couch that had a can of beans holding it up. Hallelujah. But God will save you on a couch that's been held up by a can of beans. The leg was broke. Wouldn't stay under there. So, oh, fix it all here, man. Amen. Put a can of beans under there. And they worked. Somebody shout hallelujah. And nobody knew it except me and Sister Jean. But God's still good. Hallelujah. He's a mighty good God. Oh, God, isn't this good tonight? Amen. Just for a few minutes tonight, let me just share just a little something that the Lord shared with me. Amen. And uh, God is so good. How was you, Brother Buddy, when you got saved or come to Rowena? 20. in your 20s. How was you, Brother Barney? 20. And he got to, how was you, Sister Doris? 19. 18 years old. But I don't forget any of this. Amen. God's good. Young people, let me tell you something. I had a spell one time at church. And they made fun of me and they laughed at me. And they told everybody, Brother Wayne, uh, they said Wayne had a spell. Well, I didn't want nobody to think I had no spells. Something wrong with me. But, so I quit having spells. Made me so miserable. One day I looked and said, I don't care what you think. I'm going to have another spell. 
And by the grace of God, I've been having spells ever since. And I take medicine and they get worse. Call the gospel. Somebody shout hallelujah. Give these singers and musicians a great big hand tonight. Thank you all. Amen. God's a mighty good God. Hallelujah. I had a spell when I got Sister Jean. I did. Somebody shout hallelujah. God is good. I want to share some things with you tonight. The Lord shared just for a moment. And it really goes right along with everything that's been done, the singing, the worship. The singing has been awesome tonight. And uh, um, this is what Ezekiel, uh, that God wanted to show him and, and teach him a couple of things. And, and, and the Old Testament is a shadow of the things to come. And ever what was in the old, amen, has been revealed in the new. The Bible said, afterwards he brought me again. This is Ezekiel the prophet. Unto the door of the house, which was the temple. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. Now, eastward is always a new beginning, amen, as the sun rises in the east of a brand new day, amen. I know that God always wants to do something new in your life with establishment, amen, of the things of God, but yet he wants you to keep moving forward. For the forefront of the house stood towards the east, Excuse me. And the waters came down from under from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Now hold it right there for just one moment. When I look at this and I read this and God gives direction eastward and then the forefront of the house towards the east and the waters came from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. God is always a God of direction. How many of y'all travel the roads and don't know what direction you go in? But if you'll push a little thing mostly on your car, it'll tell you if you're going north, south, northwest, east, west. Or no, you can't go east, west. But you can go northwest, southwest. How many of you can't go east, west? Can't do it. It's impossible. Amen. But God is a, always a God of direction. Now, you may not know exactly what all's going on, but God guides your steps. Even when you don't even know, God is guiding your steps as a child of God. Next verse, please. Then he brought me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits. Now, when they started out, it was just a small trickle to the point. But as this began to go forth, it began to widen. How many knows that God never stops you with just shallowness. He never stops us at a certain place and say, you've got enough of me, you don't have to go any further. He measured a thousand cubits and brought me through the waters. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now look at this. A thousand cubits is about 1,750 feet. And he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the ankles. And he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, were to the loins. They're waist deep. Afterwards, he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. Brother Jason, say the prayer. Yes, God.
Would you give God a shout of praise tonight? You can be seated. God bless you. When I look at this scripture and Ezekiel saw something that had never existed in the temple before. He never saw this. It was a river flowing directly from the temple. This river, it signified the flow of the Spirit of God that's taken us deeper and deeper till God has full control of our lives. How many knows that God never wants us to go backwards but forwards? Can I get a witness in here? God wants to take us, everybody shout, forward tonight. And amen, when the, when the, when the man measured a thousand cubits, then he said measure another thousand, and he took Ezekiel through those experiences. Can I get a witness? He took him to the place that where the water was so deep that he was not in control himself any longer. How many believes that we're coming to a place that God is taking us way beyond anything that we've ever seen before? Folks, will you know it or not tonight, there is a move in the heavenlies. And when you begin to get into the heavenly realm of this thing, you begin to sense something like you've never had before in your life. How many knows, amen, when we struggle here on this earth, but the Lord told John in Revelation, he said, come up hither. I was in the Spirit, John said, on the Lord's day. And the Spirit said, come up just a little higher. How many believe tonight that we need to continue to press forward like we ain't never pressed? Young people, this is for you tonight. This is for you that if you're 50 or 100 years old in here tonight. God wants us to go forward by the power of an almighty God. Now, I preached to you Wednesday night about going a little further, but I want to bring this out, amen. And I, when I began to get this message, and I said, well, Lord, I, I preached Wednesday night, and God said, take them a little further tonight. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now the water that flowed from the temple, it is symbolic of God's refreshing word. How many knows when you hear the word of God, it should refresh you. It should encourage you. Even if it's doing, if it's correcting you, you ought to say, thank you, God, that I'm getting a deliverance that I need in my life tonight. There's a lot of people that don't want their sins preached on, but if there's some in your life stopping the flow of God in your life, you need to get rid of it that the flow can flow. Somebody shout, let it flow tonight. Somebody shout, let it flow. Let it flow tonight. I'm, amen, I just don't want the experience of the ankle deep, and you've heard these messages before, but the ankle deep is good, uh, but I've got to go further than the ankle deep. Can I get a witness in here? But if you're not careful, the devil always has something uh, to want to stop you uh, and to say, right here is good enough. Go to Numbers chapter 32 and verses 1 and 2. The children of Israel had came out, of the, getting ready to come out of the wilderness, amen, and they get ready to cross Jordan, and in this scenario, they've, been, they've wandered 40 years in the wilderness. They've wandered. And in this situation, we've got Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh. And in these two and a half tribes, they have cattle. And the Bible says, and the the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. Everybody say moo moos. That's good. And when they saw the land of Jazar and the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle. Now, God blessed them with cattle. And God wanted to bless them. And God gave them a promised land. A promise that where milk and honey flowed. A land that the, 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 the habits of the land ate up the place. Uh, amen. When, amen. When grapes was the size of what we call cantaloupes. And for you old folks, mushmelons. Anybody remember what a mushmelon was? Bless your heart. Amen. If I ask some of you teenagers, are y'all growing mushmelon? 
you say, what's a mushmelon? It's a cantaloupe. So when you go to the grocery store and you look at the cantaloupe, say, Brother Wayne said, that's a mushmelon. Remember that? And the old folks, some of them didn't have no teeth. They would let, let it get that real mushy. And they'd eat that thing up a storm. They go at it. Somebody shout amen. Now watch this. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben came unto and spake unto Moses and to Eleazar the priest and said unto the princes of the congregation, saying, now look at this. Next verse, please. Go, go on down, go on down. These are just, uh, amen. Next verse. Whoa, whoa, back up, back up. I'm sorry. Even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is a land for cattle, and we've got cows. So let us, let me just grab phrase, go on. Let us just stay here because our cows can graze good, and we can raise some good fat cows. They was more interested in feeding their cows than they was fulfilling the promise of God. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you? Sometimes the church can get to the place that we're satisfied with what we got. I'm blessed. This is that, and this is this, and this is something else. You, you fill in the blanks. So we're just going to stop right here because God blessed us here. God has blessed this church beyond measure. I've seen miracle after miracle in the, in the physical realm, the natural realm, and the spiritual realm. I've seen God do things that I've scratched my head and said, God, it's, it's hard for me to believe it, and I know you can do all things. I've seen people get saved that I never thought would get saved. I've seen people get healed, amen, that I didn't understand how God even healed them because, amen, their life. Somebody shout amen. I've seen miracles. I've seen folks, amen, amen. When a man walked up to me and said, uh, how much you like building this church? And he didn't know we was out of money. He didn't know that we was broke. Had a few hundred dollars in the bank. We spent it all. No carpet. Things still had to be done. I said, we're doing okay. He said, I didn't ask that. I want to know if you need some finances. I, wouldn't, I thought the poor old guy, I thought he'd come in for an offer the way he looked. Sorry about the profiling. Somebody shout amen. He didn't look like he had two nickels to rub together. Now, I, I tried to figure up carpet 15,000, 20,000, and I figured up a little this and a little that. He looked at me and he said, will $30,000 help you or finish it? Help me nothing. Somebody shout hallelujah. He said in two days. He said, you'll get a check from my bank, a cashier's check, out-of-state bank. He said, it'll be for $30,000. Let me tell you about this bird dog. He kept his eye on that mailbox. Somebody shout hallelujah. you talking about the miracle of God. Can I get a witness in the house? You say, well, I don't see a big miracle in that. I, you, you, you weren't the one sitting in my position. God, amen, amen, I don't know what the devil meant for evil, but God blessed out of it. Amen, somebody, amen, uh, amen, had good insurance on, and a storm come, and amen, uh, the snow caused some roofs to fall in and different things, different things. And they got the roofs fixed, and they had a little money left over. And they wrote a check to the church, and we paid off some more stuff. You understand how big God is? That when we stop short of what God wants us to, how we deny ourselves of the blessings of God. God can do anything at any time and anyhow. Can I get a witness in the house? Piano tore up one day. Somebody walked up and said, go buy your piano. I said, well, they cost a lot of money. They said, go buy you a piano. We bought a piano. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But God ain't never done me like that. Oh, yes, he has. You just ain't really realized how good God's been to you in other ways. Somebody said, well, what did you do with all that money? We paid it on this building. Amen. Hallelujah. God's good. 
Somebody shout amen. When we were getting ready to put air conditioners, heat pumps in this building, some of y'all think they never work right, but anyhow, maybe it's the, maybe it's the operator. I'm going to preach to y'all. I got one estimate was sixty-some thousand dollars for five units. One was forty-seven thousand. That was from a Christian brother. I'm doing you a blessing. I just happened one night to Sir Gene and I went to to Bread of Life Cafe. Thank God for the Bread of Life Cafe on a Friday night. We come back, seen a Baptist church with the lights on. I said, I just want to look in that church what it looks like and ask them, can we come in? The pastor was there. I said, we get ready to put some heat pumping out of how much y'all got in y'all's and all this kind of stuff. He said, you go see a Baptist preacher by the name of Rick Nelf. I called Pastor Rick Nelf. I said, Pastor Rick Nelf, I'm a Pentecostal <laughs> snake handler. <laughs> That's what he accused me of anyhow. Y'all just don't get upset. No snakes. <laughs> I can see that going across the air. He said, let me figure out, and he came out. We went from 47000 the cheapest we could get, I believe it was 28000 I said, how can you do it? The other guy was going to give me generic heat pumps, and we got them, can't stop a train. How does God do these things? If you just keep with the flow, God makes ways when there ain't no way. God knew our need. God spoke to that man. Can I get a witness? God can speak in a moment of time uh, and where the sea has not been parted, God can part that thing and you can walk across on dry ground. My God, does anybody hear me tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, but we get stopped so many times. We get hung up with something. Uh, the children of Israel, amen, the Reuben and Gad and, 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 and the Danites, uh, they stopped short of the promises. Uh, it didn't mean, uh, amen, that they was lost, uh, but they stopped short of stepping their feet uh, in the victory uh, that God wanted in their life. There's a river flowing, uh, and it ain't just ankle. Uh, it ain't just knee. Uh, it ain't just waist, uh, but it's a flowing uh, like a mighty river that cannot be passed over by the power of God. Woo! I don't know where you want to stop at, but I'm not looking to stop tonight. I hear the sound of abundance of a mighty wind tonight. Can I get a witness in this house? Give God one more shout of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Ezekiel was instructed to enter the water, to walk four different times, uh, amen, throughout the depths uh, of this thing tonight. Uh, amen, every time he walked, uh, there was an increase uh, in the depths. Uh, I wish somebody could say, Lord, uh, I want to go a little further. Uh, I want to wait out uh, just a little more. Uh, I'll get rid of something, uh, but I've got to get out there. Uh, I'll get rid of every, what it takes uh, because I've got to get uh, into that water uh, that cannot be passed over. Let me tell you something, folks. Two of the hardest things you'll ever do in your life is to give and forgive. You know that? You don't believe it, let God speak to you to give sacrificially. You've got $200 to pay your bills with. God says give 100 of it. Hello? Now, God's not interested in your light money, your cat food money, or your dog food money. But if you're obedient to God, the dog will get fed and you'll be blessed. <laughs> Anybody hear me? To give is one of the hardest things that most Christians do is because their love is not where it should be. Because when you love on this level, you give on this level. Well, glory. You do not keep a clenched fist. Says, God, it's mine. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. To give and to forgive. That really means to release that person from guilt, condemnation, and to set them free in your life. Not that they ain't already free. Had a lady one time come to me and she said, I want to tell you something. She said, I will not forgive you. Now, I, I, when this little incident happened, I wasn't good and saved. And I got good and saved after that. And I went to that lady and I said, I want you to forgive me for the quarrel that me and you had and for the things that we had said about each other. Why does he get quiet like that? And I said, I want you to forgive me. She said, no. I won't forgive you, and you'll go to hell because I won't forgive you. And I said, no, 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 you got this thing backwards. I'm going to heaven. You ain't the one going because you won't forgive. Because God can't forgive you until you forgive others. Turn the air on because it's got warmed up in here. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And what you do is, it's not that you can maybe forget it sometimes, but you just pass on by it and go on. That lady said, you go to hell. Thank you. Boy, she, she was enjoying that. She said, I'm not going to forgive you. But you know what God did? And I said, I, I said, I'll ask you to forgive me. That's all I can do, and I'm sorry. And years later, that young lady came to church and sat under this ministry for years, didn't she? And loved me like I belonged to her son. I was her son. She thought the sun set and rose in me. And I said, no, it rises in the east and sets in the west. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. amen. God knows how to work things out. Can I get a witness? But so many times we stop short of what God wants to do in our lives. When the water is here, and we are here playing around here. And you're the most spiritual person there is in church. We need to check your depths. Because sometimes folk can make a lot of noise. The old Indian, they wanted to take him to a Pentecostal service one night. The preacher said, come with me. I wanted to try to show the Indian what a Pentecostal service was like. He took the Indian that night and they... Had one of them Pentecostal services. He said, me heard a lot of thunder. Me heard some lightning. But me didn't see no rain. If it's going to thunder and lightning, it needs to rain. Well, glory. Can I get a witness in here? Now. This ankle deep water, everybody shout ankle deep. Ankle Good. Knee deep. Knee deep. Waist deep, better. Good, better, best. Never rest until your good is better and your better is best. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's say it again. Good, better, better. never rest until your good is better. And you're better. How many said that ought to be our life's way tonight? Tell your neighbor, I don't want to stop short just because I got a goat. Don't want to stop short because I got some cattle. Oh, they'll go over and fight. But let me tell you what this is now. Let me just preach a little while longer to you. Can I get a, oh, my God. Let me see here. Richard, where you at, buddy? Come here. Come here. Come here, Nevaeh. Come on. Come here, Braxton. Look at this. How old are you? 17. That would be illegal. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
ought to be illegal. Is that right, Brother Jim? That's right. Now, you girls, can I use you? Y'all come right here and stand right here. Stand right there. Hurry, hurry. Now look at this. Y'all get over here. Y'all get over here with him. Now remember this. These are the Ganites, Reubenites, and the Danites. It's their children. These are the rest of the children that went across Jordan. And when they got across Jordan, Moses commanded, or the Bible said, he prepared men. Brother, I'm going to tell you, we need a pre preparation today for what's getting ready to happen. I'm really preaching deep to y'all tonight. And when they, they got men prepared, they went back into Jordan. When, listen, and the, and the, and the, uh, the Jordanites uh, or the land of uh, oh, what was Jericho, amen, the Jerichoites, uh, amen. When they, amen, they said, well, amen, we know they're over there, but they can't bother us because the Jordan is out of its banks uh, and we're safe because they can't get across. But there was a report come by and said, my God, you can't believe what God is doing down at the river of Jordan for those men. He's making a way when there is no way. Do y'all hear what I'm telling you? Somebody in this building tonight, God is going to make a way when there is no way. Yeah. Now, y'all are good young people, but your parents, just not, I'm using this symbolic, made some bad choices. And told y'all, hey, we don't have to do this. It's not for us. We got grass. And these folks watched those men take out of Jordan stones and carry them up on the bank on the other side. And they built a memorial unto the Lord what the Lord had done. And they said, that this generation may not see the miracle. They'll never know what the, really the manna was about. They won't see the miracles that happened in the wilderness. But when you take them stones and you put them out there, and these, not these, I love y'all, but I'm sorry. Y'all will never ask because you got your eyes on the green grass. That's all mom and dad has told you about is the green grass. Ooh. Oh, y'all want me to reverse it? Y'all be the good ones and then be the bad ones. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm just using these. But come here, Dad. Ask him. Send him to watch me. Oh, ask him. You, 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 you sort of. Son. It's when Jordan was overflowing his banks. And there was a man called Joshua that said, in three days, you get ready. You prepare your vittles. There's another word, prepare again. You get everything ready because the manna's not going to be there no more. Where are we going? Amen. There ain't going to be no food for a few days. You prepare your food while you can get it right here because in three days, we're going to cross that Jordan. Somebody ought to shout tonight, God's making a way. When you get into the spiritual realm, there's something that happens when nothing else can happen tonight. When you pray an effectual prayer and you blow a hole through the skies and the powers of hell and God says, I heard you, something's going to move by the power of God. See, so you never saw those rocks being took out. You never saw those huge stones. And you'll never know what God can do. Now that's sad. But that'll make y'all get really fired up that you'll know what God can do. Because in your life, somewhere, you'll have a crisis. You'll have a crisis. You'll have one. I've had many of them. You'll have a crisis. And if you don't know those stones are out there, and what God can do, you may go deeper in drugs. See, I used to preach to children like this that's now been on drugs for a while. They don't have no teeth left in their mouth. They were beautiful young ladies and handsome young men. And they've been with more women, had more marriages, Got babies from one end of the county to the other. 
Well, it's just the truth. Because they said, we've gone far enough. See, Sister Liz has crisis in her life, and she's 65. Somebody shout amen. See, y'all will have crisis in your life one of these days. And you won't know how to handle it. And the world says, take medication. I'm not knocking that, but some medication is not the only answer there is. What's that? What, what, what do you call me? People. What is that, right? You call me people? Hello? Anybody home? <laughs> I've been there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Peepaw? Paw? And Paw Paw? And Peepaw? What, 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 what's, them, what's them stones? Oh, honey, let me tell you what them are. It's a move of the Holy Ghost. It's when God said, wait out a little further. I'm going to do something mighty in your life. And that'll stir your faith. That you'll start saying, God, it was good for mom and daddy, but I want what mom and daddy had plus some more. Anybody with me here tonight? Hey Amen. I've seen what God did for my mom and daddy, but I want just a little more than what mom and daddy had. Granny had it, uh, but I've got to have a little more. I'm living the most wicked, ungodly hour, but the most blessed time because God promised an outpour of the Holy Ghost in my life. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, remember, remember them rocks, what God done, what God done, how God moved. And we didn't stop with the grass and the cows. Thank y'all. Young ladies, you remember, don't stop short of what God has blessed you with because you can live under your privilege or you can live above this world's dominion by the power of God. Do you know that two of y'all are statistic to be depressed, have anxieties, and your anxieties have anxieties? And for you to try at least once to kill yourself? That's proven. Well, glory. Do you realize one of y'all, according to statistics, will get pregnant out of wedlock? Out of not being married? That's what wedlock means. Hello? Y'all realize this? But you don't have to be a statistic. All you got to do is wait on out a little further. Is it okay to be preaching to y'all like that? As <laughs> long as y'all go by, I got to preach like that. Somebody shout amen. Do you realize? Y'all can be seated. Y'all sit right there because I'm going to use you again. Do you realize? That out of ten of y'all in here, five of y'all, according to statistics, will be divorced before you're, you run your marriage out or before you die. Fifty percent of all people get married, get divorced. It may be higher than that now. Hello? Is it higher than that now? Fifty-seven percent. 60 to 70 percent now. We ain't talking about drug addicts. We're talking about Christians, the same rate as it is in the world. Y'all hear me tonight? Do you realize, Isaac? Y'all realize that it's already against you to even get married? 
unless you keep going on in God. Do you realize that me and this young lady, come here, sweetheart, will be married 49 years in a few months. Forty-nine years, I have been gloriously blessed. Yes, she has. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. amen. But do you realize after 49 years, we can get divorced? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you can. You can. I know people that has. Oh, they live in the same house, but they're still divorced. Real glory. It's all right. Amen. God's good. And the only reason that we haven't, we just keep waiting on it. Huh? Because the devil don't like me. No, sir. The devil don't like her. No, he don't like you, sir. Somebody shout Amen. He don't like you. And every time I see a precious child, they used to sing an old song. Can I just preach a while for a minute? There's a song was called Rank Stranger. Anybody ever heard this song? That's an old, old. He was some mother's darling. He was some mother's child. See, every drug addict Every prostitute is some mother's darling. Some criminal that's been going to spend 40 years in prison is some mother's darling. Had hopes for that baby. But something got a hold of their lives because they thought they could drive it yourself. I love you all tonight, but I'm going to present you, baby. Somebody shout Amen. Go ahead and keep cranking me up, Heather. And don't say God's good tonight. Somebody shout way down a little bit deeper. How far do we want to go tonight? I don't want to stop at cattle. Somebody shout, I don't want to stop at the cows. Hey, Amen. I want to keep going further by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Give God one more shout of praise in here. Go to, uh, go to Joel 3 and 18, Daniel. 3 and 18, by the grace of God. Tell your neighbor, I want to wait out a little further. I wonder what's out there that I've never got a hold of yet. I don't know about y'all, but this is good for me. I, I'm enjoying this tonight. You think about it. You think about it tonight. You think you've had hard times? The devil wants to make it harder on you. Sometimes you can wake up with the wrong feelings in your life. Huh. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Maybe y'all the one lives in, under a coconut tree and drinks pineapple juice and sing with the angels. The devil do anything he can to destroy you. Always remember you've got an enemy. And that enemy is not Brother Wayne. It's not the folks of God. It's not your parents as long as they're godly. It's the enemy, and he'll kill you. He'll destroy you. See, come that close. Destroy me. And Sister Pam said she got rebellious. All y'all can fight rebellion. I did. It's horrible. It makes your life miserable. You wind up eating slop. Let me go over and preach to some of these folk. Tell them you'll wind up eating slop. You'll wind up eating slop, I promise. Tie my shoe, please. Somebody shout hallelujah while I preach. Listen to Joel 3.18. This shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine and the hills shall flow with milk and all the rivers of Judah will flow with water and the fountains shall come forth of the house of the Lord and the waters of the valley of Siddam. Amen. Amen. You know what this is saying? I want to bless you in abundance of ways that the world don't know a thing about. How many wants to be blessed of the Lord? And it's only blessed if we keep going out there just a little further by the grace of God. 
How many of y'all want to go further? I've been saved a long time. We've been preaching a long time. We've been running this country a long time. But we ain't finished yet. I still got 25 years and I'll think about it. That 50, that'll only make me 75. Is that right? 50 and 25 is 75, right? How do you know? Brother Adam Bennett can verify this. Come here, Brother Adam. Lady come to my house the other day, didn't she? Brother Adam was there. We were talking. Brother Adam knew her well. Knew her since a child. I said, Miss, she got talking about how old she was. I said, Miss Bright, how old do you think I am? Because most people, God does not discern, have, have no discernment. <laughs> I said, how old do you think I am? You remember now? Tell them what she said. 50, 55, wasn't it? 50 to 55. Yeah, something like that. I'm the rooster in the barnyard now, buddy. <laughs> Is that funny? <laughs> uh, yes, she had her glasses on. Come out of her, you spirit. <laughs> Leave me alone in my moment of time. I'm going to go to bed and get, sure you not get me up, but leave me alone for a few moments. Let me dream on. Tell your neighbor God's good. How many of you want the lime? Throw it out just a little further. I've got to hurry. Amen. Amen. Listen to me tonight. When God wants to do something, go to Isaiah 43. Amen. In verse number 8, uh, verse 13. Isaiah 43 and 13. Hallelujah. When God wants to do something, shout, when God wants to do something, he don't have to ask permission. Oh, you ought to shout hallelujah. He don't have to say, devil, I want to bless the, I want to bless Wayne Key. I want to bless Solid Rock. I want to bless Buddy Steel. I want to bless you. Amen. He don't have to ask nothing. When I want to do something, God said, yea, before the day was, I'm he, God said. And there's none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Amen. That word led, led means uh, who can hinder. If I want to do it, who can stop me from doing what I want to do? Nothing can stop God. Well, somebody ought to shout yes. When God wants to bless me, it can't nobody stop it. By the power of God. And I'm blessed coming in, going out on the left and the right. And we all blessed of the Lord tonight because the devil couldn't stop the blessings of God. Do you realize that God saved your daddy and your mommy? And put them in a church just like this for you. Because God's got plans for you beyond your understanding. I don't mean to embarrass you, but God, I believe you'll be a Dorinda before things over with. <laughs> Laura Lee, Sister Deal. Remember that, Sister Laura? God, that was, a, that was one more preacher woman. Shout, shout all over the place. God have mercy. First time I met Sister Deal, amen, she come down the aisle of shouting, hand behind her back. Had them, she is, uh, it was one time, had them old boot things on. She come down and shout with her eyes open. And I said, hmm, that ain't God. You can't shout with your eyes open. You always got to shut up as tight as you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. I mean, she, she got to shouting. The Lord said, who said she can't shout with her eyes open? Ain't it amazing how 
We tell God what God can't do. See, God knew what you had need of. And God sent you to a church just like you had to have. You can't live in the smoke if you hunger for the fire. Can I get a witness in this house? I've got the fire and I can't survive in that smoke. I told y'all that story many years ago. Well, amen. When I first got in the ministry, little old brother by the name of Lester Barentine, he's in heaven tonight. Amen. White headed. He parted his hair down the middle and combed it back on each side. Amen. He got to preaching one of them old time Pentecostal, one of them old time holiness men of God. He said, God birthed me in the fire and I can't survive in the smoke. That's where God put me. He put me in a church that had the fire. And brother, I don't want no smoke. I want the fire. How many of y'all want the fire tonight? By the grace of God. If you want the fire, Stand to your feet and give him a praise uh, that God, I want the fire tonight. Zechariah 14 and verse 8. Hey, man, as I get ready to close. Zechariah 14, verse 8. Hallelujah. Zechariah 14, verse 8. In the name of the Lord God, tell your neighbor if God wants to do something, he's going to do it, and nothing can stop it. I got to close here in a few minutes. Hallelujah. Zechariah. Mm, God's good. Somebody shout, God's good. Hallelujah. Technology is wonderful, but sometimes it's slower than I am. Hallelujah. In that day, and it shall be in that day, that living waters shall flow out from, from Jerusalem. Half of them towards the former sea, half of them towards the hinder sea. In the summer and in the winter shall it be. No matter what kind of condition that you may be in, in a winter season, that water's still going to flow spiritually. Now listen, this river, this river that flowed out from under there, it's going to go down to the Dead Sea. And everything in that Dead Sea, I mean, there's nothing alive in that Dead Sea. That's why it's called the Dead Sea. But when that living water flows into that Dead Sea, things start coming alive. But it said the marsh places, the miry places, the swampy places, the bog places, well, the old water has a stench to it. it. It's in there, but there's no flow. Stagnated. Stagnant. You hear me? Y'all know what stagnated water is? Mosquitoes. Lay their eggs in it. It stinks. It's not refreshing. It won't strengthen you. That living water will not flow in that kind of a place that is stopped up. Please hear me as I close. That does not desire. There are churches tonight, and I hate to say this, that does not desire the move of God. They're happy, they're saved, and that's all they want to be is saved. And I thank God for that. But they don't want to move on with the flow of that water. Y'all hear me tonight? Y'all hear me tonight? I don't want to wind up in a Murray place when the move of God's are going on. Brother Jerry, I want to be right in the middle of that sparkling water. I got the other day, Sir Gene, I was talking about Lake Cumberland down here. Do you know that there is, I don't know what measurement they measure it with. but They've got it measured and the depths. That there's two trillion gallons of water in Lake Cumberland. Two trillion gallons. Now, I'm not going to tell you what's that, 100 million for one trillion A thousand millions is one trillion. And there's two trillion gallon of waters, water in Lake Cumberland. They said if you took it out and sprayed across Russell County, this whole county, in the crests, in the valleys, and everywhere, it'd be over three inches deep in this whole county. That's how vast and how much water is in Lake Cumberland. 
But if that thing broke and it has a narrow path to flow, it's beyond imaginable what he can do. The Spirit of God, God said, I'm going to open the windows of heaven and I'm going to pour out my Spirit. Now, the word pour don't mean trinkle. May I borrow your water? Yes, if you like. It's your fault. God said, I'm not going to do that. God said, I'm going to pour. That means he's going to turn it upside down. <laughs> you thought I was going to pour it on him, didn't you? Thank you, sir. Temptation is strong, but God's good. But I want you to understand this tonight. God wants to pour it out on you. My daughters, Jeannie, Robin, your son, brother, buddy, sons, sons, daughter, Isaacs, somebody shout amen. On you daughters, you've got the same promise that those on the day of Pentecost had. For my handmaidens, your sons and your daughters, do you realize what God has for you tonight? Do you realize what God has for you young people tonight? Do you realize if you're willing to say, God, I want to go with you instead of go with my friends or the world, if they're leading you away from God? Can I get a witness in here? God's good. I got a preacher friend of mine. Listen to me as I close. Get ready to come to music. I got a preacher friend of mine. He's in heaven tonight. But this old boy got all stirred up. He said, let's go down in front of the post office. He said, I got a bottle of strychnine. He said, let's drink it and show them how much faith we got. He said, you nut. You go down and drink both halves. And leave me out of it. See, you can be led astray by the wrong thing. But tonight, God wants to touch us tonight. How many of He wants solid rock to go? Throw it out a little further, a little deeper. Now, I want to tell you something, folks. Hey, man, I usually don't preach a message back to back like this, or I think I don't. But God is telling us is to go forward tonight. And Acts 17, Daniel, verse 6, as I close, as they come to music. That early church that was called Pentecost Church. Can I get a witness? That they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Was they not? And they was full of power. That church was not weak. And the Lord is not coming back for a bunch of broken down old churches that ain't got enough victory to even want to go to church. Can I get a witness? Does you, do you have a vision in this church to throw it out a little further and get to the place that you can't pass over to the other side? It's God that's in control of your life. And he's the only one that can take you through to the other side. Can I get a witness in here tonight? How many of you like tonight that God wants to stir your heart and cause us to go out? Just a little further, just a little further, just a little further. Throw it out, and we'll get to the place. Acts 17 and 6, Paul and some of the men was down there preaching, and they, there's at Jason's house, and certain brethren into the rural city cried that they've come down here, and they've turned the world upside down. What, what that word really means is I studied it out. They preached so hard and so convincing that they made you face a decision in your life what they wanted to do. See, I'm preaching tonight that you need to make a decision. Am I going to stay on this side of Jordan? Or am I going on what God has and be able to tell others what them stones mean by the power of God? Can I get a witness in here tonight? Stand to your feet all of this building.
Aleluya. Aleluya. Well, glory, glory. Aleluya. How many of y'all want to say hallelujah one more time? How many tonight wants to make a decision? God, help me go just a little further tonight. So, Gene, you got a song? You got a song? Well, glory, glory. I'll sing. Somebody shout glory, glory. Hallelujah. I want to go a little further. I'm very appreciative, my priest, this morning. And all of you folk that's in this building tonight, there's probably 125 people here, maybe more than that, maybe 150. You might not realize, but we got 200 and some chairs out, so it's over half full. Listen to me just a moment tonight. And I'm very appreciative that we've got this kind of congregation here tonight. But I'm not satisfied because somebody's going to hell. That's right. Somebody's darling is laying in the gutters out there tonight, puking. And one of them will swallow their own puke and aspirate. What that means is they'll suck it up back down their mouth, down into their lungs, and they'll drown on their own puke. That's what it means. I've seen some good men die like that. Nothing but a lungs full of puke. That's plain, that's simple, but you'll never forget it. Somebody shout amen. It's horrible. When a mama cries at a casket, why did you do that? Why? Why did you do that and break my heart? Why to God? And you stand there and ain't a thing in the world you can do. Somebody shout hallelujah. Brother, you better be glad tonight that you ain't died in your own puke. For you sophisticated few folks, vomit. And call it what you want to. But it's the same thing. Somebody shout hallelujah. And it's horrible. What I'm preaching tonight, that we go forward and not backwards. Would you raise your hands as I give an altar call? Play softly, would you please? Hallelujah. There's somebody in this building tonight that needs to make your mind up. That you're going to stay in and you're going forward by the power of God. Come on, love him right now. That you're going forward. By the anointing of God tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, reach out to Him. This altar is open tonight if you need God. I know you've said it, you've, you've made your own self promises. I won't do that no more. Only to find out that you broke your own word to yourself. Because you can't keep your own word without the strength and the power of God tonight. Sing it. I'm learning to lead. Oh, yes, I'm learning <laughs> to lead. Come on, saints. Anybody want to pray tonight? Anybody just want to say, Lord, I just want to rededicate and commit myself. And I'm Sing it. For Surrender it all to you. Amen. He wants to come back to the Lord tonight. Amen. Talk to him. Talk to him, son. Talk to that. Pray with that young lady here. Anybody else tonight? Don't let pride and rebellion keep you from the things of God tonight. Come on, saints of God. Pray all of this congregation. Pray tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of God. Yes, God. Lord Jesus, can I just ask the congregation that can and would just to walk on down to this front and say, Lord, I just want to go further with the power of God. God, I don't want to stop over here because if I came out here too long, I'll get into carnality. Come on, would you tonight? Come on, come on. Come on, young people. Come on, everybody, mamas and daddies. Come on. Oh, yes, I'm learning. 
Come on, would you? Come on tonight. Say, God, I want to. That's it, David. Talk to him, son. Jesus right now. God, I loosen him. I loosen him. I loosen him in the name of Jesus. By the power and the authority of God's word. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Struggle. Call in the struggle. In the name of Jesus. And a heart in the name of Jesus. That is burning Come on, sing the song with us, everybody. Come on and worship God one more time. I'm learning. I'm learning to lead. I'm learning to lead. Yes, I'm learning to lead. Yes, God. I'm things that like a vice but tonight I feel the Holy Ghost earthquake and power of the anointing of God Whew. I'm going to lay my hands on you one more time give me that oil there don't we? hallelujah we're going to anoint you in oil hallelujah you may have to go back into seem like a den of powers of hell that amen that wants to destroy you but there's going to be anointing upon you by the anointing of God I command those things to loosen him by the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus name in the name of Jesus call him there be a strength in him In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, give him peace, Lord. God, give him peace right now. Give him peace. Oh, let there just be a calmness in his soul. about this gentleman many years ago about 13, 14 years ago he came to Rowena with Johnny, Brother Johnny and him he got gloriously saved at Rowena went back to Indiana and some things happened different things over the years I want you to listen to me for a minute please listen to this but I seen that man sit back there tonight and I wished, I wished all of God's people had that kind of hunger that stirring that burning to realize, God, I'm not close as I need to be. Because if we're not careful, we get satisfied being where we at. Let me please, I'm just telling you the truth. Not that you're going to hell, not that you're unsaved, but you just ain't got that hunger to get closer to God. I'm doing the best I can, Brother Wayne, but I just got to put a fire in you. Again, he had. Young man, I want you to go. If you, if you can't find nothing good in Indiana, I'm going to tell you something you can find. You can move to Russell Springs. <laughs> David, give me the anointing oil. I want everybody to reach your hands this way for this young man. Folks, you understand something. Now, I want to tell you something. I can bring person to that person. A lot of areas don't have good Bible-believing churches. I've got, a, I've got a gentleman. I've got two of them. This is no exaggeration. I can prove it to you any day of the week. I've got two gentlemen I know right off the top of my head that drives over 25,000 miles a year to church. 
nowhere else but to church over 25,000 miles a year. One of them drives 200 miles a Sunday and 200 miles on Wednesday. Plus all the revivals. Over 20,000 miles. I got another that drives over 25,000. Takes him two and a half hours one way to church. Amen. See, folks, when you get a passion, if you've got to find a church, you'll find one. Not being critical, I'm just telling you the truth. If you've got one five miles from you, you ought to shout happy and kick your heels up. Get out and dance half the way to church. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, as they go back to Indiana, God bless them. God touch them tonight. Oh, God, and I don't know the circle. I don't know a thing. They may have a great church there tonight. I don't know, Lord. But God bless them tonight. God touch them in ways that only you know how. And God, as you've sent them this way tonight, God, to be a blessing to us and us to bless them. God, you make ways for them tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen. She's all right. It's all right. It's all right, baby doll. It's all right. Give God a great big shout of praise tonight. Amen. You're welcome, buddy. Hallelujah. Anything else you want to say? Huh? Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Oh, come on, let's give him a praise. Tommy. Okay. Let's believe. Sleep for Brother Tim <laughs> and for T Tani and her son tonight. Reach your hands this way. Father, right now there's no limit and we're in agreement tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, that you brought special miracles at the hands of Paul on his body. God, tonight you're the same God that Wayne Keith serves, solid rock people serve. And God, I thank you that you're going to wrought a special miracle. God, through these claws tonight for David and for each one here tonight by the power of God. In Jesus' name, I proclaim it. I speak it. I declare it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Would somebody give God a praise tonight?